Now to the world of sports, where the Women's World Cup is underway. This year's tournament features a record 32 teams and 64 matches. Two countries are also hosting for the first time, Australia and New Zealand. Let's bring in Jordan Angeli. She's an analyst for the CBS Sports Network, Golazo, and she's also a former National Women's Soccer League player. So the U.S. has been number one for a long time. What makes them so strong? This is a team who has a lot of expectations and they have since 91 when they won their first World Cup, but really it was 99 where this team started um, really showing that across the world, they're setting the standard. The biggest thing about the squad now is now they've had back-to-back -back World Cup wins. No one has ever done it three times in a row. So can they get that third consecutive championship? I think it's going to be... A lot on these youngsters, 14 new players into the U.S. women's national team who have never played in a World Cup before. However, I think that's kind of a benefit to them, that they don't really know what to expect, that they can go out there and play freely in the way that they normally do out on the pitch. They're led by Alex Morgan, though, and Lindsay Horan, mm -hmm. who are really strong right. players and a lot of confidence in the captains to lead this squad. Well, talk to me about the chemistry uh, on this team. I mean, you've got sort of on the one hand this tremendous experience, these veterans, and then you've got sort of the energy and talent of these new players. Yeah, and when I say 14 new players, I'm saying they've never played in a World Cup. These players have been a part of the U.S. Women's National Team now for a long time, all but Savannah DeMello, who is only the third player ever to make a Women's World Cup roster for the United States without getting capped or getting her first playing experience with the U.S. Women's National Team before she was named to the roster. So these players know each other well. They had a number of games throughout the beginning of the year to get well acquainted with each other. Vlatko Ananovsky, the head coach, not only assessed them there, but also assessed them in the National Women's Soccer League, which is our domestic league here. Went and watched all these players play to make sure he was picking the right ones to go to the World Cup and make sure the, to make sure the U.S. Women's National Team do their best to bring home the third in the row. So what's the team's uh, Achilles heel or, or their weakness, if there is one? The one thing I'm looking at at this squad is they tend to have some difficult team difficulties against a team who plays a little bit lower of a block. When I say that, I mean they play defensive a little bit more. They put a lot of numbers behind the ball and make the USA play through those numbers. If it's an open game and there's space, space for the U.S. women's national team, they do a really good job of playing through the lines, getting in beyond, using some of their speed in 1v1 situations. But if it's condensed, how can this team break a different squad down? That's potentially the Achilles heel because if they give up a goal, a team's going to bunker a little bit. They're going to sit back and defend. And oh, I'm hmm. curious to see how the U.S. handle that. Right. It's not really not playing to their strengths. So which country do you think could surprise us in this tournament? Surprise? I think Brazil. This oh. is a squad <laughs> in Brazil who has a lot of flair, a lot of attacking uh, prominence. Marta playing in her seventh World Cup. She is uh, incredible. And they have a lot of young talent rising up. Dabinha, a big star here in NWSL, is going to be a player that they play through a lot. But for this Brazilian squad, one of the things that they've done over the last couple of years is really focused on defending. They bring Pia Sunhade in from Sweden and brings a little bit more defensive mindedness to this squad. So now they have that good balance between they can go forward with a lot of flair, but they can also hold it up on the defensive side. And we can't leave this conversation without asking about where things stand on the equal pay issues. Well, I think for this World Cup specifically, the money pots are a lot different than they have been previously. FIFA putting a lot more money into the prize money for the teams participating and, of course, for the teams that would eventually win it. So I, I think that there is progress and, you know, there's going to be a lot of conversations even going into this World Cup um, with uh, Nigeria not getting paid coming into it, Canada having some disputes with their federation. There's always going to be chatter around that, but I think that's because everything is moving towards more, um, towards that pay that towards is that right for the mm -hmm. yep. That sounds, yeah, that sounds very good, very promising. Jordan Angeli, thank you for your experience and also your insight. Yeah, thank you so much, Catherine.